So this is actually the most painful part of the procedure because pulling on the suspensory ligament is very painful. Um, so if we don't have a good plane of anesthesia, now's a good way to find out. Um, we have double checked our plane of anesthesia for her. So one thing is, if, you, if this is too tight and you cannot maneuver, there's no reason to be a hero, okay? So let's make our incision a little bit bigger, very carefully, so that we're not pulling too hard and we're not being silly, okay? There's no reason to take a risk just to have a small incision. So now we've made our incision a little better. And what I'm doing is I'm pressing down on this tissue rather than pulling up because I don't want to tear anything prematurely, okay? So what I've done is given myself a little bit more room, all right? And I feel better that things are not really tight in here. But thanks to the suspensory ligament holding everything still, what I'm doing is I've separated out the horn here, the blood vessels that I need to tie off, and the suspensory ligament with using my fingers. This is not intuitive, this takes practice. So right now I'm gonna cut the suspensory ligament and it's going to allow me to lift this up so I can maneuver a tie. Oh, we have a surprise in here. She's pregnant, which is one reason why this is a little harder. We'll just do this first. So you can see that she's got a baby in here, which is another reason why it was difficult to find her uterus because it was big in many places. So now I'm gonna just, this is the, the me method of tying off so what I'm trying to do is give myself the most room I can. So I made a hole in the broad ligament. I cut the suspensory ligament. Now I'm gonna hold this in an awkward position it seems. Parallel, facing down. I'm gonna go behind it. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to open it and I'm going to grab this tissue right here. See? So now I have a knot and now I'm going to I'm going to clamp this so that it doesn't bleed when I cut it and make sure there's nothing else between here and I'm going to cut this. Okay, so now I've cut off the ovary and the horn from the blood vessels. I'm going to move the fat out of the way and I'm going to make a knot. The only thing that can happen if I tie this properly when I push this over is a knot. Okay, that's called a pedicle tie. We tie it on itself rather than using suture. Suture can slip, pedicle ties don't slip. They also don't require suture and they're much faster when we do high volume, high quality spay neuter and vaccine spay neuter. So now because we have babies in here, we are gonna have to make our incision a little bigger. So I'm going to carefully make sure nothing is in my way and I'm gonna gently cut another tiny bit of skin so I can bring this out. So she has surprise for us. One baby on one side. So typically if there wasn't something here and I couldn't reach the uterine horn, the, this is the two horns meeting. If I couldn't find them easily, I would use my spay hook to pull the skin rather than pull this to help bring everything out into the open for me. Okay, because I don't want to pull too hard on this tissue. So now you can see that you have the body of the uterus. You have one horn and here's the other horn that also has a little friend in it. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing though. Instead of pulling on tissue, we're going to press down, pulling this forward to bring this out of the body for me. And again, I use the suspensory ligament as my friend to help me see where I am and hold everything still. So I've separated out the horn, the blood vessels, and the suspensory ligament. And I'm actually holding the uterus, the ovary in my hand. That's the proper ligament right here. You can put a clamp on the proper ligament and use that as a way, but for me, this seems to work out best for me. So now I'm going to, again, I'm gonna cut the suspensory ligament. It's the same exact procedure if they're pregnant or not. The vessels are just bigger, typically, when they're pregnant. I'm gonna make a hole in the broad ligament. I am very gently holding these blood vessels because they're fragile, and if I let go, they're gonna tear. I mean, if I pull too hard, again, 
parallel behind, twist, and grab. Clamp, and clamp again up here so it doesn't bleed once I cut it. And now I'm going to cut the ovary off from the blood vessels. Try not to get your finger in there. And now I'm going to slip this off. Now it's kind of scary, it slipped off. But I know and I'm confident that the only thing that can happen when it split, splits off is a knot. But if I'm worried, and I'm ever worried that there's bleeding, I have an instrument called an Alice Tissue Forcep that I will take and put some gauze on. And if I'm concerned, I'm gonna just fish around with that and see if there's excessive bleeding that would tell me that perhaps my knot for some reason didn't. And this is a normal amount of bleeding from the skin and from the incisions we made. So there's not excessive bleeding in there right now. I feel confident. So now there's bleeding here because I missed a clamp. I didn't clamp this very well. So the blood vessel is oozing here, but don't worry. It's not to be concerned. So I'm just covering it so you could see better what I'm doing. So now I have two holders of babies that are not expected. So I'm gonna gently pull this tissue out so that I can reveal the body of the uterus and I can safely clamp it off. So these are the horns and this is a nice big uterine body. For uterine bodies, we use a special clamp called a Carmalt. If you can see, it has lines that go this way and it has some holders down there, as opposed to a regular hemostat, which has lines that go the opposite direction, smaller lines. So this is an excellent crushing instrument that does not um, tear the tissue. So it's a very helpful instrument, especially for the uterine body. That's what we use it for. So we only have one. When you learn, you'll probably have more than one and you'll line them up, but we only have one. So we're gonna use one at a time. Now we're gonna take our suture out and we're going to make a Miller's knot around this uterine body, holding the end of our suture. We're gonna go underneath. I'm gonna show you a way. We're gonna put it over this clamp here, go around another time. So we've gone around twice. Now I'm gonna go uh, around this two times. Go underneath this and grab this. Looks complicated, but once you practice the Miller's knot, you'll be able to do it. Why do I do a Miller's knot? Because it's a very strong knot. It does not tear easily. And why am I doing it over this? Because what I want to happen ultimately is I want my suture to go in this crushed tissue, okay? So it fell nicely into that tissue that I crushed. And now I can make a nice tight knot, okay? The reason we want it to go into crushed tissue is because if we try to make a knot on tissue that's like this, once we cut off the blood supply, the tissue's gonna loosen up and the knot's gonna slip off. It won't be tight enough. So because I only have one clamp, I'm gonna move this clamp up higher so, because I'm going to make a second one, but right now I'm going to leave the clamp there while I finish knotting my Miller's knot. So I made it nice and tight. Then I just finish it with a couple surgeon's ties or a couple throws. Three or four. And that's that. Leave it a little bit long so you can find it if you need to. Now, a lot of, if they're a big uterus like this, I like to do what's called a transfixation. This means that I'm going to put my suture through the middle of the body of the uterus so that it cannot slip off, okay? It can slip off if it's just around it, but if I anchor it in the middle, I know it's not gonna slip off. So I'm anchoring it in the middle and I'm going to tie it in a knot so that both blood vessels on each side are tied off individually in my, again, in the crease. So I'm gonna just come now to the other side and I'm going to tie it off so that both sides are tied off, but it's held tightly in the creased area by a, by a suture through the middle of the tissue. So I know that it cannot slip off now. 
you can only do that, or ideally you should only do that distal to the blood flow, right? So I made one knot here, and I do this after this knot, because if I do it sooner and I hit a blood vessel, it will continue to bleed. But now I know that it's not gonna bleed, okay? Now I'm gonna cut this off. And I'm gonna gently allow it to fall back underneath. 